Welcome back again to All Things Mysterious to discuss some supernatural, true crime, conspiracy theories, and whatever else Matt and I decide to come up with. I'm Jordan. I'm Matt. And today I have a weird mystery for you. The Winchester Mystery Mansion. Matt, what do you know about this story? Everything. No, you don't. I know everything. You do not. You do not know everything about this story. I know you don't know everything about this no, story. I have heard about it. Um, definitely someplace. It's on my bucket list that I want to go to visit. I mean, it does seem like a really cool place to visit. Um, it's just kind of a crazy place that you just you hear about and you want to go to. Yeah, I've heard some of the theories about this. and I'm ready to debunk them. Oh, I'm sure that you are. <laughs> I'm sure that you are. I just wasn't sure what all that you had heard or knew about this place. So it's kind of a wild story. The owner was a woman named Sarah Winchester. And honestly, she kind of had a sad life and it was full of a lot of loss, um, which a lot of people speculated may be the reason behind her building the infamous Winchester house. Uh, She was originally born in 1839 in New Haven, Connecticut, and in 1862, she married William Winchester, heir to the Winchester fortune, which, of course, Winchester being the rifle. Back then, of course, it was like a huge deal. Um, And in 1866, they welcomed their first and only child, Annie. And Annie, unfortunately, passed away five and a half weeks after she was born. And that's just the start of the loss. That was part about it is how rich they were. And that's not, honestly, that's not even really when she was really rich. Like, that's before she really inherited anything. Well, but her husband was still rich at that point. He was rich, but that's before he technically inherited, like, everything. Hmm. Like... His father, technically at this point, owned most of the company. So in 1880, both Sarah's mother and father-in-law passed away, leaving most of the company to William, Sarah's husband, and a ton of money. And I'm pretty sure it was like $20 million. And if you think about it, $20 million in today's standards is a crap ton of money. Think about how much that was in 1880. Like, that is an unbelievable amount of money. But it gets even worse. Mm, It does not stop there. Depends on how you look at it. Well, I mean, just think about the loss, though. Like, she's starting to lose just about everybody. And back then, everybody was really close. Um, Three months after that, William, her husband, passed away from tuberculosis. Which left her all the money. $20 $20 million and half the stock in the Winchester Rifle Company. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. Because, you know, she got the money and then half the stock, but she wasn't allowed to run the company. Yeah, no <laughs> rights for women. None for you, though. <laughs> Sorry. We'll hey. give your husband full control of the company, and then when he dies, we'll just take over. You can't handle it. No. And to be entirely fair, though, like, she really did not seem okay after all that. Like, she really did not seem okay. After all the loss for what, I think it was a year, she wore all black. Just for a full year. So she went through an emo phase. She did. She went through an emo phase. Um, And you know what? More power to you, because she went through a lot in that year. Um, And then she moved to San Jose, California. And bought a farm or a ranch called Lanada Villa. Villa? Villa? Listen, when I was looking at this, I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. And I was focusing too much on the first part. (laughs) (laughs) You always make fun of me. (laughs) I was focusing too much on the first part. Lanada Villa? um, Something like that. Lanada? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, But it's now known as the Winchester Mystery House. But it's more like a mansion. Back then, it was big. Um, before she even started renovating it. But now, it is... Like, 
a historical landmark at this point. Um, There have been so many stories done about this place, so many rumors, myths, tales, anything that you want to say about it. Like, Matt, what what do you know about this place? Like... Uh, I mean, I've heard a lot of stories about it. Um, You know, that it's got a ton of bedrooms, ton of rooms, um, a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense necessarily. Um, You know, the the whole lot of stuff. Um, Now, how much of it is true, I don't know. uh, Because... It doesn't make sense to me, um, which I'm sure you'll get into the whole paranormal aspect of it here shortly. I sure will, because so. for once in my life, I'm not doing true crime. <laughs> Don't uh, worry, guys. I will go back to that eventually. But Or, or <laughs> what if this is a true crime story? It theoretically could be, but... What, what if she's actually a black widow? She could be, but... Honestly, to be fair, from all accounts, it seemed like she was just really, really bad luck. I mean, when everyone starts dying around you, then you're probably the problem. That is a solid point. That is a solid point. So when she bought this house, it was 161 acres and it was only eight rooms of the actual house. And she immediately began construction and remodeling. She hired two architects, but insisted on doing the design herself, which is actually really kind of cool because as Matt said, um, back then women weren't really allowed to do anything, but she insisted. And it was under construction consistently for 38 years until she passed away in 1922. Now, I told you it was eight rooms when she bought it. I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't find how many square foot it was when she bought it, but it is now 24,000 square feet. 24,000. There are 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 160 rooms, 52 skylights, 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, and 6 kitchens. And, as you already guessed, none of the house makes any sense at all. I mean, to be fair, it's not like she had actual training in architecture. No, she didn't. However, it goes way further than that goes way further than that stairways lead to ceilings and the stairs are either extremely steep or extremely shallow trap doors will lead you to your death from the third floor just open the door fall to your death cut off you're done you're gone bye i kind of figured that when you said death yep cut off (laughs) you're you're just done does it really do make that ta-da sound yes like a cartoon (laughs) That's the last thing exactly you hear. what happens. <laughs> but, uh, you're dead. <laughs> yes. And it's basically a maze. You basically need like a guide to lead you through it. Because you don't know if the door that you're going to open is lead to a room or lead to a wall behind it. You have no idea. The place is just, it makes no sense at all. And the construction just never stopped. Like, they would build a 16-foot tower tear it down, rebuild the whole tower, tear it back down, rebuild it again, for no apparent reason. Ooh, ooh. Can, I, can I say why? Can I say why? I know why. Sure. It was because she went to a psychic who said that her family was cursed. And the only way she could appease these spirits is by buying the house in California. And then she had to do construction on it continuously to appease the spirits. Kind of. That's basically. Kind of. Because she went to a psychic in, I think it was Boston was originally where she was located at. Something like that. The theory that I read was a little bit different than that, but similar. Yeah. Similar I, to that. I mean, 
there's I've, I've heard multiple versions of it that's the one that seems like it had the most validation of yeah, it. Yeah, the most credibility. Yeah. Um, I mean, either way, it's kind of just guessing at that point. I mean, obviously, the one that was alive back then is alive still. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, not a lot of it makes much sense at all, period. Um, there's a couple of different ones that kind of make a little sense. A little bit. So, it is said to be very haunted. It's also, like, Visitors claim to hear footsteps, there's cold spots everywhere, lots of smells, sounds, whispering, doors slamming. People say that they feel like they're being watched, and before you say it, no, we're not going. We are totally going. We're not going. Oh, you lost last week, so... This is not the place we're going to. It is. No, it's way too far away, and after all the stuff that we're buying right now to work on other things, we're broke. (laughs) We're gone. (laughs) Oh, by the way, that, that that's your punishment. <laughs> no, it's too far. That's why you chose this place. I, I actually would really like to see this place. However, we'll have to wait because it's really far away. Oh, well, then we can go to the, the Sally Demon House in oh. Kansas. A demon house? <laughs> a demon house. Yep. You think you're going to get me in a place that has demon in it? Demon. Take, take your choice. I'd rather go to some place in California. This place yeah. doesn't have demon in it, just mystery. I'll take mystery. No. Jesus Christ. Good God. We'll let the audience decide. No, because the audience will choose bad things for me. <laughs> They've already chosen badly enough. The audience has already chosen badly enough. To be fair, you're the one who actually brought up the ghost hunt and I know I am, but I had a feeling you were going to bring it up, so I threw it in there because I was worried that you were going to bring this up. I wasn't going to. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) I was just worried about it. I was going to say, like, I get to throw eggs at you or something. That was going to be the punishment. Why in the world (laughs) would you throw eggs at me? As a punishment. What the hell? (laughs) I don't know. I just well, anyway, to throw eggs at you. the audience apparently has decided that we get to go ghost hunting, and we do have equipment on the way for that. Mm, kind of ish. We have equipment ish on the way. We'll work on it. We got some good stuff coming up for you guys. Yeah, we do. We have some really exciting good stuff coming up. So anyway, um, one of the theories that I have ties in with Matt's, um, and she believed that. If she stopped construction on the house, she would die. Yeah, that, that was the other version of that. Yeah. Um, that I've heard. Because that. of a fortune teller. <laughs> a fortune teller told her that if she stopped construction on the house, she would die. Yeah. Which is stupid. I mean, it really kind of is. But at the same time, like, she literally never stopped construction. And it never, ever stopped until she actually did die. But, but here's the thing. She wasn't actually doing the building. No, she wasn't, but she was in the design process. But at the same time, it still doesn't make sense because she wasn't the one hammering the nails in. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, if this, if this ghost said, hey, you've got to build this house and you can't stop. If you do, you die. Obviously, the ghost is an idiot because she never even started building in the first place. You know, it was already built. She just had to, like, remodel and stuff. Well, I mean, technically... It was basically because from what I've read, the there's only like one room that's from the original house that's still actually part of the house. Yeah, I mean, she like changed the whole thing. Yeah, I think that's the hay- hayhoft or hay- hayloft. hayloft. Yeah. Yeah. Everything well, else has been destroyed. It's weird because the way that she integrated all of the different design elements into it, like there's different eras of all sorts of design mixed into the house, like stained glass windows. But there's gothic stuff mixed in. There's Spanish stuff mixed in. Like, it's all sorts of different design elements. And it's honestly really gorgeous. All the pictures that I saw were absolutely stunning. And it's not something that you would see anywhere else, which makes it a really popular um, destination for people to want to go see. Um, and you can go see it. It is somewhere that you can go get tickets to go tour and all that fun stuff, which... We're going to go see. Eventually, sure. But it's... 
it's really, really cool to look into. Um, but I don't know. It's There's another theory that um, people believe the house is haunted by all of the ghosts that the Winchester rifle killed. And I don't know if I believe that one because, like, I don't believe that ghosts leave the place that they die. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't make sense to me because... I mean, why her? I mean, she's she's not the one that made the rifle. Exactly. She's not the one. She eventually inherited it, sure, but she's not the one that made the rifle. She's not the one that some I mean, so decided to do all of the killing. In this in this theory, it's basically saying that the ghost somehow found her. How did the ghost find her? Well, exactly. She moved across the dang country. Yeah. I mean, even then, but like it's not like she was the face of the company or anything. No, she really wasn't. She was behind the scenes of all of it. She eventually inherited the money from it, sure. And I mean, unless you knew kind her, of the company, unless you knew her last name or knew her, yeah, you know, you're not going to know who she is. She's no. just going to be a random person. Not at all. And it just really is just kind of a wild, out there theory that I definitely wanted to include, but it's still doesn't make sense to me because like i said like it just it doesn't make enough sense to me the first theory i can kind of see because if you're superstitious enough okay i can see you hiring people especially with all the money that she had and believing that if she eventually stopped construction she would die even though she wasn't like i said the one that was doing the construction physically herself but this one like i mean how does that work do they does do people still go to the Winchester mansion now if they're killed with a Winchester wife? Well, like, is that is that how it works? That's the case. That, 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 that thing's haunted as hell. <laughs> they're going to have, like, billions of souls in it. Exactly. Like, how, is that how it works? <laughs> uh, that, that, that's always been my biggest There's, like, a big flaw in that for me. Yeah. I mean, even the other one kind of has a big flaw. In, uh, because, I mean... There have been people that actually knew her and were friends with her Mm -hmm. that said that she paused construction all the time. It wasn't like 38 continuous years. No, it would pause for a month or two. Well, but there was even some that said that it it would pause for a year or two. I mean, it's not like... The longest I heard was a couple months, but that was was, what I read. And this has been a while ago, but from what I read, there was one letter that a friend of hers wrote... That said that, you know, she'd paused it for like almost a year or over a year or something. I don't know. It's been a long time ago. But my point is, if the ghosts are going to kill you, if you don't keep construction, any pause would end up in your death. Exactly. So. And then I would still argue that she didn't even start construction in the first place. Exactly. It's not like she started from scratch. Well, but not even that. I mean, I. I, He didn't pick up the hammer. Yeah. I mean, I would take the remodel as part of the construction. You know, considering the fact that they built more rooms than than the house originally had, hmm. anyways. Can you even imagine 160 rooms? 160. I imagine trying to clean that thing. God, can you even? That's so many rooms. You'd have to have like 50, a friggin' 50 or 60 maids just to. Yeah, they gotta have a giant team to keep that thing clean and running and. I, I guarantee you, like, half the rooms now don't even have anything in them now. There's no way that they could keep that clean. Oh, I guarantee you a lot of it's just walled off and not even... I mean, I, I don't know how she kept it clean. I mean, she was kind of slightly insane, so she probably didn't. Well, I mean, but she had the whole team of maids and servants and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that... she did. I mean, she had the money to do it. Did, which actually I mean, kind of leads me to the last theory. I think it wasn't her, her maid who her fa- her found her after she passed away? I think so, yeah. I know she passed away in her bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why that's also the same. She's one of the people that haunt the mansion. And I believe that, too. That's the only one that I would believe, honestly. Yeah, she the is. only one that makes any sen- like any sense at all. Now, I will say, I mean, you know, I don't know anything about the previous house. So, I mean, there could have been death in the house. There's, like, almost no record of the house before she lived in it, because it was just a house, like a ranch. It's just to me. It really is. It was just kind of a nondescript villa that just was there. People lived in it. It was a farm. It was a ranch. And, ta-da, it was there, you know? 
Yeah, but it's arguably it's the eighteen hundreds. Well, I know, but you can find out a lot of stuff from the eighteen hundreds. You can, but you know, just land ownership and stuff. Anyways, I forgot where. The last theory <laughs> <laughs> um, was that she believed she inherited the fortune and wanted to take care of other people. So, d- listen. So, she never wanted construction to stop and she was trying to take care of the community and just took care of all the construction workers by never ending the construction. Therefore, keeping all the construction workers... Like, with a paycheck. Okay. So, a few problems with that one. That was something that I read, and it was interesting enough for me to mention. Which, you know, as a person who is a giving soul, I was like, oh, that was kind of nice. But, I mean, it's not like she's going to ever do anything with $20 million back in the 18... Well, actually, towards the 1920s. But still. I mean... Donate the money. I mean, if you want to help the community, because let, let's say how many people were actually working on construction there? There are quite a few, but still at the same point, I know I mean, I'm uh, with you on that. Yeah, I mean, let's say maximum 50 people. Really, even, you know, unless that house, which I get, you know, and the house is going to yeah. be big, but basically when they keeping started, people employed and. But I mean, that helps 50 people. And, you know, then you could argue that maybe they're family. So let's say they had, you know, a wife and two kids. So that's, you know. Right. I'm, I'm with you there. Like, there's way better causes to put that towards. Yeah. I mean, she could have donated to a soup kitchen. She could have, you know. Heck, she could have fed everybody in, in that community. Right there with you. I mean, and I know, I know some people will say, well, you know, at least this way she was getting something out of it. No, I mean, not really. It was something that I read, so I decided to throw it in there. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a nice theory, and that, that one just, maybe she was doing something with it, which is nice, but maybe it was a combination of a couple of things. But, and then here's other part Maybe she was just straight up delirious. Yeah. I mean, she lost a lot of people, and she went straight up insane. I mean, she is rich, so money does that, but... It does. It does no, make you now insane. No, now go because I'm not done with this yet. Oh, no. I set Matt off. <laughs> you did. Um, <laughs> because it just, it makes zero sense to me. Because, for one, hiring the construction company, most of the cost is going to be for materials. You know, labor is going to be the cheapest cost out of all that, especially in the 1800s. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean... That makes no sense. I mean, sure, she's helping 50 families, but really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, $20 million that, you know... Oh, yeah, that's not even putting a dent in the pocket. Well, and, and that's just what she was inherited. I mean, she's still getting, you know, monthly yeah, and checks she was and stocks. Fairly, and, from a fairly affluent family to begin with, it wasn't like she came from a super poor family. She was fairly affluent before that. So yeah. she wasn't coming from absolutely nothing well i know but i mean it's you know 20 million dollars and then probably probably more than that every year or at least Mm -hmm. a couple million every year between the you know money from the winchester and then stock options Yeah. yeah so i mean she had enough money but i just i don't like this theory just because it it, you just don't like my theories no Okay, yes, but no, <laughs> this one is the worst because it's like, the, remember when we were talking about conspiracy theories? Of course. And, you know, I said that it's like people see something and then try to, you know. Make it fit the narrative. Yeah. Yes. Make the evidence fit. And that, that's exactly what they did here. It's just like, okay, this is what happened. So let's just say she was trying to help the family. No, th- there's no evidence of that. There's no proof of that. And even if she wanted to help <laughs> she could do it in much better ways. She could. She could have done it in other ways. And, you know, maybe there was more record of other things happening that we just don't have record of. But still, I completely understand. And I don't have any record of her giving other money away or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure what happened to all of her wealth. Um, That's a good question. What did happen to all? I should have looked into that. 
Dun, dun, dun. I mean, I'm pretty sure I probably went into a trust for the house. Probably, because, probably, Jesus, the upkeep on that thing's got to be just enough. probably how the house is still just Imagine not trying to heat and air that thing. Yeah, I mean, I, so, legally speaking, if she would have passed away, it would have went to her next of kin. If she didn't have a will. And let, yeah. You know, if she had a will, then it would go to where the will specified. But if she didn't, True. it would go to her next of kin. So, I know she didn't have any kids, obviously. Any husband. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she had nothing after that. I mean, she... I don't know about the rest of her, but I'm sure she had a sister, or brother, or cousin. Somebody got the money. Uh, you know, unless she had a will, which... Jordan's trying to look that up. I am. I'm looking it up right now. But I mean, um, Some of it apparently went to her niece. Oh, see, she did have family. Um... And a lot of it went to a trust. Probably for upkeep of the house. Oh. I mean, honestly, maybe that's what she wanted is to build something that somebody would remember her by. I mean, obviously it worked because yeah. her name is synonymous with, you know, this house. It's true. I mean, it's literally known as the Winchester Mystery House or the Winchester Mystery Mansion, which it's called a house, but my God, it's 24,000 square feet. That thing's a mansion. Okay. I mean, I've heard people call it the Winchester Mansion. It is. It, it really is. Like, it's insanity. I mean, why not, if you want to, like, atone for, quote unquote, your sins for, you know, being a part of this family... Hmm. Why build a house? Like, build a monument or build, you know, build something for everybody. True. Very true. But yeah, it looks like it mostly went into a trust of some sort. Anyway, now we know. My guess is it probably went to, like, a trust for the house. So she probably had plans to make sure that house... Stood That's after she died. Question: I had, to, I had to find out. Because I'm pretty sure that it's like a Winchester nonprofit that owns the house still. Probably. That like went a, to like her niece or something like that. Some of it, not all of it, not even like a lot of it actually. Well, no, I'm talking about just the house, not yeah. not the money, because the the house is still operated. It's not owned by a private party. Yeah, no, the house is. It's like owned by a trust. Uh, I mean, it's probably owned by the trust, and then there's like a board that oversees the trust. Mm -hmm. my it would guess. be really cool to see, though. There's no, like it's... secret passageways in there and all sorts of crazy things. All Victorian style. and We'd have to get free access to the whole house. And then I'll make sure you got lost in there and leave you. Of course you freaking would. Dead. Uh, Let all the ghosts attack me. We're definitely going to go back when there, we eventually get money for it there's a i mean there's a lot of like i've seen videos of people in there ghost hunting and stuff and there's a lot of rooms i want to see like the witch's hat so cool though there really is it's just crazy because like the seance room there's just there's so many rooms and it's just bizarre like none of it makes any sense and i want i want to know what was going through her head when she was making it because I mean, I couldn't make that up if I tried. Oh, I could. I could well, yeah, because you're insane. If if I had if I had as much money as her, I would probably do the same thing. You know why? Because you're insane. Just to fuck with people. Of course you would. I mean, you love fucking with me and just making my brain go all sorts of stupid places. Y'all know that. That's my best favorite thing in the world. Oh, don't I freaking <laughs> know it? But I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it would be so much fun to do. Like if I ever become famous, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something so odd and I'm never going to explain it. <laughs> it's just going to be there. And then a uh, thousand years from now, people are still going to be talking about like, what the fuck was he thinking? And they're going to be like, Jordan, you knew Matt. And I'm just going to be like, I did, but I didn't. Okay. 
I did, but I didn't, and I can't explain it. I were gonna rich. I'm gonna build a fuck Chester statue. Ugh, you would. And I'm gonna be like, I didn't know him. You had a podcast with him. I didn't <laughs> know him. <laughs> build it into the side of Mount Rushmore. I never met him. I didn't know him. Come on. We build- have we have record of you and him having the. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Could you imagine having a fuck Chester ne- uh, next to Mount Rushmore? No. <laughs> <laughs> because you're insane. Come on, that'd be awesome. No. We're not ruining a national monument. With would, fuck Chester. It wouldn't ruin it. It would make it better. No, it would ruin it. <laughs> We're not better. ruining Mount Rushmore. Good God. This episode went way off the wires. Okay. The Grand Canyon. Uh, there's actually a lot of... Things I've heard about the Grand Canyon. It's carved it into the floor, so anytime someone flies over, actually, that would be not as cool as Mount Rushmore, but some interesting conspiracy theories about the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's a freaking hole in the ground. Not that important. Not that fascinating. I'd like to go at some point. Still, I mean, I'd like to go, but that doesn't mean I think it's just really hot down there. I like Arizona. Like, I'd move to New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California, or Hawaii. Those are the four places. Well, you're stuck with me on this podcast now, so sorry, but you're stuck. Yeah. Well, that's why I said if I ever become rich, <laughs> you're moving to Hawaii. No, I'm not. <laughs> sorry. You're you stuck just don't now. know yet. <laughs> you're stuck. Sorry. Oh, I guarantee if I, if I was rich enough and bought you a mansion down there, you'd move down there. So no, you, no, I would be away from all of my family. No, and you don't count. That's why they got Zoom. No. And Skype. And, no. And every other kind of technology. No. Heck, I'll be rich I might occasionally travel to do ugh, ghost hunting shit with you. Gross. <laughs> oh, I still hate all of you for wanting me to do that, but no. I mean, to be fair, you are the one who brought that up. Because you started it in the way long ago, and I thought, anyway, I thought, anyway, I'm not even, I can't. <laughs> I can't with you. I can't. Anyway, All I know is that's the, the story of the Winchester Mystery Mansion for today. Because we're all over the place. That's how the, I mean, that's how these episodes are. Now. I mean, they are. I don't even know. <laughs> Poor listeners are like, what are you even talking about? I told them a few weeks ago, they get my full <laughs> brain now. <laughs> and they're going to go on a journey with us, just like I go on a journey every day. I'm over here trying to keep it on the same same I, wavelength, and it's not even happening. Oh. Like, you know how cool it would be to go up to George Washington's nose? What? In Mount Rushmore. Why? I don't know. Then I could be said to have some in somebody's nose. No. <laughs> Just. No. I don't know, though. My favorite personal theory on this one is the original one that she believed that there was obviously a fortune teller that told her that she had to do control. I solved it. No. She was crazy. Well, obviously, I think... End of story. Why are you like this? (laughs) I mean, Occam's razor. Simplest answer is probably the correct one. Um, Probably so, though. I mean, she had a lot of loss in her life. She lost, like, everybody, and then she was like, F all this, I'm moving to California, and I'm gonna build the craziest shit ever. I mean, because here's, like, all of this is based on just speculation. I mean, it's not, it's not based on anything that she ever said. I mean, it's basically based on her it's actions. It's hearsay and action, yes. And it's just like conspiracy theories where they're just trying to fit this narrative to, you know, here's what happened, so this is obviously what happened because it makes sense, which, I mean, I could probably come up with a story that would make sense too. Fair, though. 
I get it. Give me two seconds. Uh, no, we're not doing... No. <laughs> I can see your gears are turning in there, and I don't know what other random crap you're going to pop out with. Got it. She was abducted by aliens, and the aliens told her that she had to build the house. You know what? For That's... all their kind. Maybe. See? Maybe. I would believe that, because... That's just about as reliable as the fortune teller that told her that she had to build a 160 room crazy house. I'm about to piss off a lot of fortune tellers, but those are the biggest scam artists in the world. I mean, probably, but people still go. I know. Why? Because we want to know. Well, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, I could tell you just as much accurate information as they can. Yeah, I know, and I still don't really understand, but people still want to believe that they can hear something of the future, and it's it's all... Reminds me of The Mentalist. <laughs> it's a good show. A good show. It's really a great is. show. <laughs> it's a great show. But no, um, I think honestly that she was just having a really tough time, lost her mind, and... She went had through a lot, lot of money. She went through a lot of loss and she never, you know... Recovered from that. Well, I mean, not necessarily. It's not that mentally. she didn't recover. It's that she never got help for it. Which is really strange because, I mean, she's a billionaire. Millionaire. The 1800s, though. I know. Mental health wasn't really a thing back exactly. then. Exactly. So the moral of the story is get help if you need it. Accurate. Don't build a 160-room mansion. Or do. Do your thing, boo. But also get help at the same time. If you <laughs> if you, if you have the money and just want to, I'm I'm not going to stop you. But also get help. Do you want me to give you a shovel for that hole you're digging yourself over there? You go right ahead. <laughs> you should probably get help. But if you also just want to build a mansion that's 160 some odd rooms, is 24,000 square feet. But get help. But also get help. But build your mansion. But build your mansion. If that's what you want to do, but I'm not going to stop you. But you should get help too. We're on an infinite loop now. We are. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks everybody for listening to this super duper weird and fun episode of All Things Mysterious. You can uh, find all of our social medias below and like, follow, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. We also have a YouTube channel where you can listen to our episodes there. And there's a lot of fun stuff coming. Lots of fun stuff coming on the YouTube's. And as always, we keep you guessing.